Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat while I go for a walk around the neighborhood here today. Haven't done this type of video for a couple of weeks now, so something different today. And as I said, we'll have a chat about what has been happening in Spain over the last week or so. So uh, let's go. Now I'll get the weather report out of the way. As you can see, it's a clear day today, sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. Very, very cold, probably around zero degrees Celsius at the moment, maybe a, a little bit less than zero, minus one perhaps. So I'm fairly rugged up, but it's going to be a sunny day, and that's a typical characteristic of the weather in this part of Spain during January. And on the topic of January, hasn't the month flown by? Seems like just 27 days ago we were celebrating the new year, so uh, as I said, hasn't the month flown by. Now an update here on the burnt out caravan. Nothing's changed. Still sitting here. Still burnt out. Somebody's opened the door. Obviously come to see if they can salvage something from the caravan but I don't think that's possible. So uh, the council hasn't come to remove it. No surprises there because the local council here never seems to be in a hurry to get anything done. But that's a story for another day. So January almost at an end. And for me, it's been a busy month outside of YouTube videos. I haven't been able to put out as many videos as I would have liked. Haven't been able to travel much either, get some videos done that way, because my English classes have uh, spiked this month. Lots of people wanting to learn English, no doubt a New Year's resolution for many, and uh, they sign up and hire my services. So that's positive. So hopefully the upward trend in the English language side of my work continues and uh, 2023 turns out to be a good year. Let's hope. Now I addressed a couple of haters on the channel earlier in the week, a couple of people criticizing my point of view. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, they tend to get a bit nasty in the comment section and uh, start personal attacks, which uh, in my opinion is not good. And this is all because of something that I quoted earlier in the week. I quoted some comments from Pedro Sanchez. People uh, misunderstood them to be my own words, and uh, that's when the hate came through. And the comments were from some irate Spaniards, two or three, that were not happy with what Mr. Sanchez said, calling them nostalgics for protesting last weekend. Uh, people that want Spain to go back to the good old days of the past. That's uh, one of the political parties involved at least. That's their idea. To take Spain back 40 or 50 years, that would be their objective. But uh, very hard to talk about politics because people do get upset. One person said that I am completely out of touch with what modern day Spaniards think and say. And uh, to be honest, I don't pretend to represent modern day Spaniards on this channel. This is an English speaking channel. I give my opinions on what's happening in this country. I try to interpret the news the best I can here in Spain. I get news from the right, news from the left, news from the center, and that's all I try to do. Sometimes I give an opinion on what I think is happening, but uh, not very often. And uh, But as I said, some people do get upset by the comments, so uh, bad luck. And if people are looking for a snapshot into what the average modern day Spaniard thinks, there are plenty of YouTube channels out there with people expressing their opinions, so go find those. But in my opinion, it's difficult to get a balanced point of view watching those channels because there's a lot of radicals and radical opinions out there, let's be honest. Now the local community compost area is up and running. Here are the uh, compost bins, but uh, you'll notice there that they are locked. Three of those ones are locked, that one over there in the background is locked as well. The only one that's open is this small one over here to the left. So not sure what's going on here with the community compost area. I just spoke to one of the locals and they said that it's only available to 30 families. Not everybody can bring their waste here. So not sure what's going on. And uh, the lady also said that one of the biggest problems is that they don't get any information from the local council. And that is another problem about living here. A lot of the local residents are kept in the dark. Now the topic of food prices has been dominating the Spanish press this week. Uh, the political party Podemos came out and said last week or maybe the week before that there needs to be a cap on supermarket food prices. And of course supermarkets are not happy about that saying that they will lose money. They will go into red numbers in about eight weeks if 
a cap is placed on basic food products, and that's where the debate lies. Or there must increase its attacks on big supermarket chains, for example, Mercadona last week, I think it was, calling them ruthless capitalists. The owner of Mercadona is a ruthless capitalist, according to Podemos, and of course he hit back saying that uh, political parties like Podemos don't know how to run the economy, so stay out of it. And then of course that debate sparked and uh, everyone was saying whether or not uh, supermarkets are ruthless capitalists or whether it's all part of the system that we live in. Somebody in the comment section made a good point and it was that they shop at a different supermarket. They don't shop at Mercadona because they find the prices there cheaper. And I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? That if you don't like a supermarket or if you don't like a, a business because it's too expensive, you find somewhere cheaper if you can. And that's uh, probably a better summary of the system that we are living in. If you don't like a place for whatever reason, go somewhere else because we have choice. But according to some, if Podemos had their way, there wouldn't be much choice. And big supermarket chains here in Spain are now worried that there's gonna be a windfall tax placed on supermarket chains, similar to energy companies and banks, because they're uh, making huge profits at the moment. So uh, some supermarket chains are worried that a new tax will be imposed. And no doubt consumers will have that tax passed on to them because that's what happens. But a positive thing to come out of this supermarket debate has been that the more moderate side of the Spanish government, that's right, the more moderate PSOE party has uh, played down Podemos's comments and uh, trying to reassure the big supermarket chains and the rich capitalists that there's not going to be any changes to the system. But I know what you're thinking. They said the same thing about the banks and the same thing about the energy companies and windfall taxes were placed on those businesses. So uh, can the current government or the PSOE side of the government keep their word? Uh, history shows us that uh, no. So we'll see what happens when it comes to a windfall tax on supermarkets and whether the big supermarket chains are right or not. Again, time will tell. And I think one of the reasons why we're hearing these voices calling for things like supermarket caps now is because the current measures that the government has in place, for example, lowering VAT on basic foodstuffs is not working and people are not seeing much relief uh, when it comes to the price of their shopping baskets. And that's one of the big issues going into 2023, an election year. Another example of Spain's graffiti problem, any uh, clear wall soon covered in ugly graffiti, I would say. Now, the final thing I want to talk about today relates to eggs. And I know what you're thinking, Stuart, why would you be talking about eggs? Well, the debate started on yesterday's live stream. Somebody in the state said that they're paying seven US dollars for 12 eggs currently. And uh, I didn't know what was going on. I thought it might be inflation, but then somebody told me that the reason is because avian flu has destroyed the uh, chicken population in the United States and uh, that has sent the price of eggs soaring. Fortunately, here in Spain and Europe, we don't have a similar problem. There is no avian flu, I don't think, or uh, there's no talk of avian flu. Although I did read something recently in Galicia, there was a problem with some type of disease. I'm not sure whether it was avian flu or not, but uh, it did make headlines a couple of days ago. So I'll check that out. But when it comes to egg prices, apart from the price of eggs increasing recently because of inflation, I think you can buy 12 eggs in this country for just under three euros. Decent eggs, that is. If you want cheaper eggs, you can find them as well. But for decent eggs, or what I classify to be decent eggs, around three euros for 12. And then keeping on the subject of eggs, last night I also mentioned that supermarket chain Mercadona, which we mentioned a couple of minutes ago as being a part of the ruthless capitalist system here in Spain, has started selling uh, eggs that have been already fried. And uh, somebody in the comment section said, what's next? How lazy can people be uh, buying eggs that are already cooked? And basically, I think this person is right. We are becoming very, very lazy when it comes to doing things in the kitchen, i.e. cooking. I read an article back in December with the person who developed these pre-cooked eggs, and he said that in five years, nobody will cook their own eggs. You'll go to the supermarket, they'll be already done, and away you go. And Mercadona has been selling hard-boiled eggs now for years, 
and uh, fried eggs are a recent addition to their stock. And this leads me to another thing that I have been noticing at supermarkets over the last few years here in Spain, especially Mercadona, Lidl and Aldi, is the amount of uh, pre-prepared food or processed food that is being stocked in those supermarkets. The pre-made food section grows and the fresh food section unfortunately seems to get smaller and smaller. And basically in Mercadona nowadays, you can buy a lot of food already prepared. Just go in there, buy it, take it home, heat it up, and away you go. And it is a trend, unfortunately, in this country that nowadays home cooking is in decline, not only here in Spain, but in many countries around the world because people don't seem to have time to go into the kitchen and cook anymore. So they're looking for everything to be pre-cooked, done, buy it at the supermarket, take it home, as I said before, heat it up, and away you go. For example, omelets, Spanish omelets, how many people make them anymore? Don't know. Croquetas, how many people actually sit down and make croquetas nowadays? Don't know, because you can buy these things already done. And uh, you just heat them up, fry, refry them, whatever you do with the croqueta, and uh, put it on the table and the family is happy. And it's a shame in my opinion, because Spain has had for many decades very good home cooked meals. And if the trend continues, Spain is gonna lose an important part of its culture in my opinion. And basically the younger generations don't wanna cook. And if they do cook, I don't think they do a very good job. And uh, that's an issue in my opinion. But anyway, the only way that we can reverse a trend like this one is to go to supermarkets, buy fresh products, take them home, spend the time cooking them, and uh, not get lazy when it comes to cooking. Let me know if you have noticed the similar trend when shopping in this country. When you go to Mercadona or a similar type of supermarket, if you have noticed the amount of pre-prepared food on the supermarket shelves. And the most surprising product, eggs that have already been fried, just take them home, take them out of the plastic, put them in the microwave, and dip your toast into the yolk. So uh, what are we coming to? On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.